Welcome. So I'm very happy to always start with an applied review because unlike other assignments that you're going to see in school, what I would like you to really do is, is take ownership of these ideas and use them in your life as best as you can. That's my objective, to be honest. Transformation, not memorization. Let's go around. Luis, something to add here to what Celine said, what Fiona said, and then I'll blast off a little bit of an overview at the end. Well, mm. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, first of all, I, I, I find this really cool. Yeah. Really interesting. What do you think Anaxagoras means and what Pablo Moret, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, what do you think he meant as, a, as an author and what Anaxagoras meant as a philosopher when he said instrument of instruments? How are the hands the instrument of instruments? It's not even hands, it's thumbs, right? It's the opposable thumb that, if you like, made our species. Because the moment we had that in our body, anthropomorphically, everything changes because now we can create things that determine a relationship to nature which is totally different than any other animal on the planet. You can argue it's an artificial place in the food chain. We're not that impressive in terms of raw physical uh, strength or speed. There's many animals that are far more impressive than humans, but we have these thumbs and we have these hands and with them we can make tools and the tools can determine a totally different relationship to nature. They can get us to surpass the boundaries, the biological boundaries that nature has imposed. So hands become the thing that make us human was the argument that was made. So they're the instrument of instruments because you can use them to create anything, to create music, as the video in the background suggests, to create weapons, <laughs> to create computers, right? Everything comes out of the hands, as it turns out. Something to maybe add, well, and then uh, Arthur. Uh, what you're suggesting is, so what Luis has, has put his finger on, is uh, the concept, the instrument of instruments. So think of hands as the instrument of instruments which enable, frankly, what it is that we are as human beings. And then what Oscar is saying is that there's a danger if we don't master this instrument of instruments. Now we have a problem because we could potentially cause damage, right? That's the suggestion. Good. Arthas, something to add to help Celine uh, identify exactly what we're talking about, and for you guys to remember and make sense of what we're talking about, yeah. Uh, let me maybe start with what you last said, which is Anaxagoras, right? So Anaxagoras was this uh, natural philosopher. He was like a proto-scientist who was not Greek. He came from Ionia. Ionia is a civilization that frankly doesn't exist anymore. Approximately where Turkey is today, that was where Ionia was. Here's the point. Ionia was a vehicle for potentially Eastern ideas migrating into the West. So I personally see Anaxagoras as an agent of, of communication. He was communicating maybe things that were learned in the East to the West. And of course, it goes the other way, right? So Ionia was a place where you had Western things going east and Eastern things going west. Anaxagoras is said to have brought the art of philosophy to the ancient Greeks. And he brings with him a very interesting concept. So I'm sure you've heard uh, this idea, especially if you're checking out our website, of uh, the, the universe, the ancients said, uh, is made of fire, water, earth, air, and the mysterious element aether that instantiates and actualizes all the other elements. And Exagoras had a very different idea, and you could argue it's uh, maybe an Eastern-inspired idea, which didn't take root in a serious way in the West. Um, the five elements did. But what Anaxagoras was saying is that everything is in everything. So it's, it's not five elements, it's not one beautiful thing called aether that instantiates these five elements. We already have all the elements of the universe within ourselves. And it's a, uh, it seems like it's an infinite number of potential things that are within us. He has this idea of like a fluid, um, he calls it noose, N-O-U-S, noose. And noose 
is translated in many different ways. I think the easiest way to remember it is think of it as the intelligence of the universe. There's a kind of mind uh, or intelligence in the universe. And that's his first principle. So this mind, this intelligence of the universe is the thing that all of us are made of. Nowadays we talk about the fact that we're carbon-based life forms and that we're made of stardust. So this stardust is like everything and everything for uh, Anaxagoras. So now we come to the key idea, what makes us who we are? Now, hands, as it turns out, become an incredibly important feature of what it is to be human. And you may be asking yourself the question, how is it possible that we came to have these hands? Well, for Anaxagoras, it's a function of noose. In other words, there's an intelligence in the universe that made it so there's a particular concentration. We could be anything and everything. However, we, we are this thing with hands. And we have these hands in order to serve the intelligence of the universe. This was Anaxagoras's view. So if you're going to use your hands, there's, to go back to Oscar and what uh, Arthas was flirting with, uh, if you're going to use your hands, which are the tool that has been granted to you and defines you by the intelligence of the universe, there's a, there's a way of doing that uh, that's good and there's a way of doing that that's bad, right? To be a master of the instrument of instruments, your hands, is to pay tribute to the intelligence. You can call it the divine intelligence of the universe. I like that idea. So, how do you come to master the instrument of instruments? Well, um, sometimes a another term that you should put in your notes, especially Celine or students who are hearing this for the first time, um, another term for the hands that comes out of Anaxagoras is the mechanism of culture. Right? Culture is made with the hands, if that makes sense. And I would offer, now this is not from the article, this is from me, Think of the difference between an explorer, let's call that person a master of the instrument of instruments, and a conquistador. Fiona, you're familiar with the conquistadors. So these were the, the European bastards <laughs> that basically went into the new world, felt that they were superior as beings and were entitled to basically commit genocide on the native population. The new world, quote unquote, is built on a heritage of genocide. Uh, that genocide is an expression of a violation of the intelligence of the universe. When we use our hands to commit genocide, and that's how America starts, right? and that's how the new world quote unquote is built, what we're doing is we're violating the divine intelligence of the universe. We're using our hands not as masters of the instrument of instruments, but as, as children <laughs> who, who don't know how to use the gift that they've been given. You see it, Celine? So how do you come to master this thing? Well. Don't be a conquistador. <laughs> Use your, and then this is the point. The point is that every human can be an explorer or a conquistador. And the difference is, can they learn to use the instrument of instruments in a way that is in harmony with the divine intelligence of the universe? So when you know that you're a finite being that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, when you know that you're connected to everyone and everything around you, you have to learn to, as I think we quoted this uh, a while back, learn to walk gently on the planet. We are effectively consuming more of the planet than the planet has to give. Consuming more air, water, uh, and food from the planet than the planet has to give, which is a suicide mission. And it's evidence of our global lack of mastery when it comes to the instrument of instruments, the mechanism of culture. So your hand, Celine, can be uh, an instrument of death or they can be an instrument of beauty. And the problem is, this is not an abstract idea, Celine. This is you. Your hands 
can either cause beautiful things or they can cause devastation. And what the difference is, how committed are you to becoming a master of the tools that you have been given by Nous, if we were to take Anaxagoras' word for it, the divine intelligence of the universe, I'm going to call it. He calls it Nous. That's what we were talking about. I'm not sure if it comes out very clearly in an Instagram post. And frankly, I use those things very ironically, just so you know, in my own head, <laughs> because I find it ridiculous that I have to make a hand emoji in order to express this point. Sorry, but that's what it is, right? If, if we're, if we're going to talk about literacy and the aristocracy of the mind, you, you have to laugh at how ridiculous it is that the way that we're communicating now is just laughable, frankly. Anyways, very few people even get to the bottom of the Instagram paragraph. Meanwhile, what are we talking about? We're talking about maybe the most important thing that we should be talking about in this century. How to, how to come to master the thing that you've been gifted, that has enabled you to be who you are as a human being. We use the example of Elon Musk because we're looking down the barrel of a very, very spicy moment. A moment where we are effectively handing over, pardon the pun, <laughs> we're handing over the responsibility of the instrument of instruments to a machine. And we, in real time students, will witness that in our lifetime. And it's not going to take long. The moment Elon sits in the machine, hands-free experience, uh, that implants a neural link that connects him to the internet and allows him to enhance himself in ways that had nothing to do with his own hands. Um, now, this is, this is now a different species. This is not a human species anymore. And uh, just to hammer the point home a little bit further, think of the difference between doing a dangerous experiment with your bare hands versus doing one with protective equipment. It's possible to do it with your bare hands. It's certainly possible. <laughs> However, you're going to be much more careful, right? Because things could go bad real quick. That's the idea. If you acknowledge your humanity, Elon, if you're watching this, <laughs> you have to tread very, very gently. And only a being that realizes that they're finite, that they can get hurt, that they can die, will use their hands the right way. And the right way is in a way that's in harmony with the divine intelligence of the universe, with noose, if you will. That was Anaxagoras' gift. He brought that from Ionia to the Greeks. They took some of it, left other parts, right? Um, but here we are talking about it. That's the important thing. If you're like me, which may not be the case, you will be encouraged to like check this out on the weekend. I know I will. If I could find that movie, I'll definitely be watching it. So here you have this artist who loses his hands in a train accident, who then has new hands, but the doctor tells him, don't worry, you'll be able to use these hands because your spirit as a pianist will come through and you will continue to play. But the mo now comes the interesting part. And, and this, is the, this is the ancient debate. What Anaxagoras was asking more than 2,000 years ago, almost 3,000 years ago, was do hands make our species or is our species making hands? If that makes sense. So it's a strange idea, but check out the 1924 version of it. The pianist loses his hands and now the doctor says, don't worry, you're in control of yourself. In other words, the spirit will rule the hand. The film seems to be suggesting, no, no, the hand rules the spirit. In other words, the material thing, this, the noose inside of you, if you will, is what determines how you're going to use your hands. So he, he gets the hands of a murderer, and now all he can do is commit murder. Because what he is, is his hands, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Materially, what you have, right, when you look down at your hands, is something that's wiser, if you will, now I'm going to give you the charitable interpretation, than you will ever be. If you had this, you know what I'm talking about in sport, 
right? You'll be happy to know that Owen is obsessed with the Black Mamba as much as me and probably as much as you. So we can talk about that during our video seminars. Owen, are you watching this? Of course you are. Anyways, um, you know this idea of like the, the wisdom of the body? So sometimes, sometimes you, you get in your head in a game and you screw things up. But if you just trust your instincts, everything goes smooth. You know what I'm talking about? Sorry, romantic example. You look at a girl or a guy or whatever, and your head is like, no, no, this isn't the right person. They, and it, like, you screw yourself up, basically. Meanwhile, your instincts say, go for it. And the suggestion here is that there's a wisdom in those instincts. There's an ancient thing happening in these hands that you have that's smarter than you'll ever be, the conscious you. Now, smart or evil, I mean, it's a, it's a movie, right? So they're trying to kind of uh, <laughs> make a sensational point. The suggestion is that when Elon Musk puts his fate in the hands of a machine, quote unquote, he basically says that this machine is wiser than the ancient wisdom associated with the divine intelligence of the universe. That's effectively what he's saying. I'd rather trust the machine than my own hands. That's what he's going to do as he implants the neural link in his head. And I'm talking about Elon, not because of anything other than he says that that's what he's going to do. And he'll be the first to put it in his head once the regulations pass. And that's going to happen probably within, for sure, five years, maybe within three years, depending on how much pressure he can exert with lots of money and corporate friends on to the American government. But the point is that, and I'm going to call what Elon Musk is doing with his own brain and Neuralink, hubris. It's ego. And it's the same thing that makes your hands agents of death. It's the same stuff that led the conquistadors to their genocide. It's, it's hubris. You think you're more than the native population and you have a right to exterminate them. What gives you this right? Thinking that you're something that you're not, right? If we don't learn from history students, we're in trouble. And unfortunately, our friend Elon is in a position to determine the trajectory of the species in a position, I must say, that isn't really earned in terms of intelligence. It's earned in the context of capitalism. He definitely has the position because of capitalism, but not because he's the right person to be in that position in terms of intelligence, in my opinion. Not because he's stupid, but I honestly think he's lacking a serious like literature and humanities education, to be honest, if I may be so bold. Uh, he's an innovator, but what he's decided to do with his own brain has an effect that's, that's so far reaching beyond him that he may not, maybe the government shouldn't allow it. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> because it puts the entire species potentially on, a, on the road to the conquistadors. So who's the genocide being perpetrated onto with Neuralink? Maybe the genocide is against humanity itself, all of humanity dies. Now everyone's the cyborg. So that's the genocide, right? For the conquistadors, it was the native population. It was the Mayans and the Aztecs. Ah, we don't need them. And, and when we exterminate them, as the conquistadors did, we preclude the possibility of learning anything <laughs> from history. And there's so much evidence to suggest that the civilizations of Latin America were so switched on, it's not even funny. First of all, they were parallel civilizations. So while Egypt is rolling and the Thracians are rolling, there is stuff going on with the Mayans and the Aztecs. These are, these are civilizations that are occurring at the same more or less time, but they have very different understanding and ideas um, that we now will never really fully know because of that genocide. So anyways, that's the stuff we were talking about. Please check out the recordings, it's worth it. Lingering questions, comments about this? Celine, does that make a little bit more sense now? I hope so. <laughs> uh, Fiona, thoughts, questions?
In Having Hands. I, the other one, I got it. <laughs> So uh, I have, um, I suppose you could call it a bias. Sure, I have a bias. My bias is I think you should always err on the side of like being humble. So in my opinion, I think there is a right answer here. I think we have to acknowledge that our hands, our physical body has been forming for millions of years, okay? No matter how many ideas I can come up with and no matter how many apps I have on my phone, I don't think I'm as smart as the wisdom that's potentially in the body. And I think we have to learn to be much more humble. I think ego, hubris kicks in and lots of nasty things can come. So in my opinion, we are intelligent in the sense that we have become what we are as humans because of the tools that I believe that were given to us. And there's a responsibility. You know, when you get a gift, you have to, there's a kind of a, you don't just take the gift, right? Like there's, there's, there's another part to the deal. <laughs> so if you, if you have a right, like everybody, for example, everybody wants the right to free speech, but nobody wants the duty and the responsibility of using that right responsibly, right? Carefully, strategically, progressively. I just wanna say what I wanna say. That's not the right to free speech. That's you being an idiot. Free speech means you have the freedom to speak even controversial things, but you have to use that right in a way that helps others and yourself, but start with the others part. So the hands are a gift, uh, Fiona. And I think that that gift, which has given us the ability to basically create culture and civilization, comes with strings, if that makes sense. And the strings connect back to noose from Anaxagoras. Uh, you can think of it as, I'm gonna call it the divine intelligence of the universe. And I think we have to be humble about what we have as humans. It's not as earned as we think it is. And we should pay respect to that. So I think that there is a right answer and I think that that answer has to be on the side of being humble. Maybe that's a bias, it's possible. But I, I would rather be wrong in that direction than go with Elon and blindly you know, plug into the internet and artificial intelligence. Remember the phrase from Elon Musk. We'll get to it in a second, but the phrase is, um, when it comes to AI, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> That's, I think, evidence of the problem, right? And that it potentially it opens the door to the genocide that will be perpetrated on the entire species of humans. Because what comes later is enhanced humans. No more, they're no longer human because the most important things that they have, they didn't make with their hands. And when you don't make it with your hands, something's missing. It's not quite as special, right? When we talked about handmade products versus machine-made products. Of course, the handmade product isn't as good in the sense that it's not as efficient. It's not as fast. But it's human, right? Like... You know, there, there's, there's limits to the utilitarian efficiency logic that is leading Elon to want to plug in to AI, basically. Uh, there's limits because, you know, sometimes the inefficient thing is the right thing. That's the utilitarian logic. Or is there one sweetheart that you should dedicate your entire life and existence to? It's inefficient to go with one, right? <laughs> Yes, it's inefficient, but it's, it's the most meaningful thing. It's the human thing. That's, that's potentially what is at stake as we plug in and start to enhance humans. That we lose, ironically, the, the beauty of the inefficiency. You know? If you've ever wasted, quote unquote, an afternoon, like your parents will say, oh, why are you spending, dad sometimes will say, why are you spending so much time with this girl, Luis? And you say, no, dad, it's a good thing, trust me. And he says, you should be doing more, you could be achieving more. Yes and no, because those those moments define you, right? Anyways, Oscar. Yeah, so I want to make a comment or I don't know, question, but uh, yeah. so I think maybe instrument of instruments can also like it directly uh, connect to your mind. Yes. Because maybe 
I feel like the mind defines him more than his hands. Mm -hmm. Because in the paragraph we just read, he was convinced that his hands were murderers. And yeah. That's what he was told. Yeah. So in his mind, like he causes that to be, they say you are what you think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. also they say that you're not your mind completely. You're also other things. So maybe... Welcome to philosophy. That's what I mean. Nobody has the answer. It, literally, you can make a very convincing argument that it's it's the soul that governs the hands, and you could be convinced that that's true. And you can make an equally convincing argument that it's the hands that determine the soul of what it is to be human. So it, literally, it's both ways. If you want the Orlac example, you know why is he having like murderous thoughts? when it comes to his wife. He wants to believe that it's not him, it's the hands of this murderer. But then you learn, wait a minute, it's just an accused murderer, not an actual murderer. So he's the one that's generating those thoughts. So which one is it? Is it the hands or is it the mind? The point is, this, we've been debating this for millennia and we're, we're, we're probably not gonna come to, to uh, a new like conclusion. Uh, I think th that's the, and I would encourage you to think about philosophy in a serious way because when you condition yourself to see the paradoxes over and over and over and over, in my opinion, philosophy is an education in paradox. That's effectively what it gives you. Um, you any other problems become like peanuts, basically. Go ahead, Oscar, and then we'll go to Fiona. Yeah, because we can't, you can't know which one it is, right? That's my beef with Elon, is that he seems convinced that there's no other way than to succumb to AI. Well, pump the brakes, mate. Maybe there is, and maybe, maybe by, by like joining AI, you're losing something, which, number one, you won't be able to regain, and he's basically saying, I don't want to regain it. Maybe that's okay for him, but we don't live in a world where that choice doesn't have consequences on everyone else. Because once he does it, then every then I'm, I'm pretty confident Jeff Bezos is going to do it as well. <laughs> right? Because he probably has the same. If you can't beat him, join him mentality. And he sees Elon enhanced and he thinks, my God, I got to catch up. Right? It's the, it's the competition bullshit. What's missing here is humbleness. Too much ego. Too much hubris. And it's always the thing that's led to the death and destruction. That's what makes the atom bombs, right? Uh, instead of using atomic energy to make free energy for everyone, we use it to perpetuate genocide on the planet and exterminate humans. What gives, right? Anyways. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're connected things, of course. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, it's really important to appreciate and respect the hand of the, the maker of, I forgot, I of the, culture, the mechanism yeah, of culture. Let me, let me clarify my, my position on, on Elon Musk. My pro I don't have a problem with him personally doing anything. He's a human with, let's just say, free will, okay? I think he's an explorer within himself. I think he's an explorer. I think he's genuinely 
just curious about the world, to be honest. The problem is that he doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? Like his company has clients. The technology he's developing can be bought by others. So that's, it, it's, it's an ancient problem, right? Like when the first explorers go to South America and are just like, oh, what is this? The paradise. Uh, that's, that's maybe the Elon position on AI. The problem isn't, to be honest, it's not even about Elon. It's about what this precedent does and what others follow with after him. So maybe he has the heart of the explorer. I think that there's a good reason to feel that that's the case. Because his whole life has basically been innovation. He's, he's a very innovative man. I had a, uh, my friend and I had a, a debate about this and he was saying, Elon, I admire Elon in terms of his ability as a leader along the vertical but not the horizontal axis. So he's a great leader in terms of coming up with the next thing, 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 genius. But a leader has to be both on the vertical and the horizontal axis. What's the horizontal axis? If vertical is innovation, horizontal is taking care of the people in your company. Like a true leader, Owen, are you watching this? Has to be innovative and has to proportionally take care of the people that are with him in that company, let's say, in, since we're inside of capitalism still. So if, you, if you're just an innovator and you're not as good at caring for the people that are with you, now you have yourself a little bit of a leadership crisis emerging. So to be a leader is, it requires both of those things. I think he's an incredible innovator. I think it, maybe that qualifies him as an explorer. But he doesn't live in a vacuum. That's my, my point. My point is that this sets a, a precedent which if we just look at our past, every time we've taken this type of a step, the second step is a devastating one. And I don't, I'm not saying this to freak you out. I'm just saying it because I'm watching this thing and thinking to myself, this feels wrong. Something's going down here that, and I'm a big fan of trusting instincts. Hey? I, this, this doesn't seem right to me. Something, something's off here in a really, really creepy way. <laughs> And we're, we're doing it before we get a chance to think about it. And then it's too late. So it's not, it's not so much about Elon. It's, uh, let's call him an explorer, but he doesn't live in a vacuum. Yeah. I think what I'm saying that, I'm just thinking about mm. aspects where he's using his company to help his intellect and also gifted to us, I would think, yeah. um, by the wisdom of the universe. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, tricky business. Celine, questions maybe now that you've heard a little bit of the breakdown and then we'll go to Arthas. Yeah, I think the, the goal is to be humble, to be cautious, to walk, to tread gently on this ground. That's, I think that's the big message that I'm pushing in a serious way. Not so much, I think Anaxagoras would agree, but he's not around. Uh, I'm not sure if Pablo Moret is, is offering that argument. I'm offering that argument. Let's be clear about that for the notes, okay? Tread lightly on this planet, on this earth. I think we've forgotten that. And maybe Anaxagoras helps us remember that. So just to clarify, because you said something quite interesting about causation versus correlation, right? So causation suggests that there's, you know, remember Anaxagoras says everything is in everything. If, you, if you're looking for a causal relationship, that means you're disagreeing with Anaxagoras. It's not a causal thing, okay? It's correlation. It, sometimes it goes this way, sometimes it goes that way. It's fluid for him. So, for example, why the hands? Why this concentration? Why, do, why have we been gifted this? If we can be anything, why do we have these hands? Well, the suggestion is that the wisdom of the universe has decided it for us and now has gifted us this thing that we have to, not causally, because it could have been hands or it could have been something else. It's fluid for Anaxagoras. Uh, but now that we have this gift, we have to pay tribute to that gift. We have to use it responsibly. So for him, it's never causation for Anaxagoras. And that annoys a lot of Western thinkers, because Western thinkers want to think about it in terms of cause and effect. 
Eastern thinkers, you could argue, but I, I really think it's stupid to think about it East-West. Think about it in terms of human, one group of humans versus another group of humans. So some humans think causal, and they want to understand the whole universe that way. Because it, it and these are, sorry, the, the math inclined have this built-in tendency, although when you get to the high, high level, things get a little spicy. But um, higher learning, that's what we're doing, right? But the, the causal instinct, I think, is, I, in my opinion, that's the danger that leads to the hubris and the ego, with all due respect to the engineers out there. The other one, which is, you could call it Eastern, but let's call it the other one, suggests that it's not as simple as a causal story. There's causal relations, but the real thing is that everything is in everything, the Anaxagoras position. So it's... It, whether it's, whether it's the hands or it's the mind, the, don't think about it causally if you're with Anaxagoras. If you're against Anaxagoras, you're going to try to figure out which one's in charge. Yeah. I'm with Anaxagoras. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The mind, mm. which is like Yeah. He's a tricky one to get rid of, Anaxagoras. And this is why we're still talking about him almost 3,000 years later, because even though basically Empedocles. Thales and Aristotle are just like, yeah, let's focus on the five, okay? Take it easy, everything and everything. It's still there for a reason, right? Because the five elements, by the way, for Aristotle, Aether is mysterious. It's, it's a kind of like, he can't get rid of the, the mysterious part. In, in math, you see this, right? Like you can, you can have theories that explain almost everything. And then there's like, uh, I'm not sure how this works, but I, but it works. <laughs> And you can't quite prove it, but it, you put your faith in it, if that makes sense. Sometimes it's referred to as first principles. In right. Aristotle, it's called the problem of the unmoved mover, the prime mover, they call it, uh, in his metaphysics, if you're interested in that. Like, if, if, if everything is caused, what caused the first cause, right? And there's no answer to that. Sylvia Berriman, are you watching this? It's my Aristotle teacher. Uh, enough of this. Shall we move forward? We talked about sushi. <laughs> um, that was interesting. Why? Because it was, I think, a lovely expression of what the hands can do, right? It's not an accident that I put this up, hey. Uh, if you haven't watched this documentary, Celine, you should really do that. Because this documentary contains, it's an extension of everything we talked about with Anaxagoras. You got to understand, this art, Rewatch it. This man is, is looking for an impossible thing, okay? He wants to harmonize the perfect ingredient collected in the, harvested, pardon me, in the, in the most balanced way with the perfect sense experience of strangers through his hands. Lunacy. Beautiful. <laughs> and this is dying. This, I mean, he himself clearly is has a beginning, middle, and an end, and he's much closer to the end than the beginning. But the problem is that with him dies something, that's the thing that I see as threatened by the Elon Musk point of view, okay? This beautiful, inefficient, crazy, most important thing of culture is, is a handmade thing that once we entrust AI, there's no, reason for it. Elon will tell you, well, you can still have hobbies. You can still use your hands for fun. But too late, Elon. You know, he's an explorer. I respect that. But anyways, and then we'll go to Louis. Oh, sorry. Arthas. Stop it. Wait a minute. <laughs> Arthas, go ahead. Uh, sorry, buddy. I didn't see. It was like, it was coming like the previous slide. I was, yeah. I was thinking like, can we like outlive our, not outlive, but like kind of overlook uh, over our innovative designers. So 
Uh, it's, it's like, so mm -hmm. it's, I don't think like the Elon Musk problem, it, I think it does have consequences. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so like at the very beginning, when we have like pens and pencils, yeah. like soccer just reminds us of the risk of pens and pencils. And yeah. Like when we wrote things down, people like think of it, that's true. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I think it's the printing press problem. Yeah. It's about the interpretation of libraries. Mm -hmm. And then we mm -hmm. have Yeah. So I think it's that when we are all we are because like we want humans want to express their curiosities. Mm -hmm. And I always think it's that our like our hindsight always mm -hmm. we always like uh, take a step step later than our curiosity. Yeah. Like all these thoughts always all these thoughts of like whether the technology is good or bad always come after the innovation of technology. You know, this this is why I'm very excited that our uh, we're going to do these live video seminars because you'll also see a perspective of someone because I'm obviously a bit removed from your moment with Owen he's also removed from your moment but not by a lot more like just by five years we'll say and here's the, the main thing that I want to say everything you just described is about the human instinct to want to go fast right oh Gutenberg let's run with it Neuralink let's run with it uh, social media, let's run with it. Before hindsight, right? <laughs> we, we have this thing that we want to go fast. And believe me when I tell you, you you're in a position in your life, <laughs> I get it, you want to go fast. Slow down, please. Slow down, enjoy the chance you have to gain an education <laughs> and to become an enriched human. Don't rush through it. If you rush through it, you're gonna make mistakes that you pay for for the rest of your life. It's true for finding a significant other. Don't rush through it. Be careful with it. The more you get to know yourself, the more you can put into a relationship, the more you can get out of a relationship. If you go fast, good chance that that's gonna blow up in your face. When it comes to your career, don't go fast. Go, this is my opinion. I know it's not popular. I couldn't care less. It's the right one. <laughs> Take your time. Be meticulous. Invest in yourself. Invest in the mind. Invest in the memory of the heart. Be the, the, the warrior of human dignity. These are the things that matter. And if you don't take my word for it, listen to Owen because he's finished his degree. Technically, he could peace out into the job market, but he's not doing that. He's taking the advice of his teacher and he's gonna stay in school a little bit longer, do a bit of graduate school because you gotta see the game. You gotta see how things work before you put yourself in it, right? If you can't see the game, <laughs> if you don't know the rules, if you don't know the patterns, if you haven't done your homework, how are you gonna be effective? Maybe you win, but there's a good chance things will happen that you haven't seen. So you will never have the perfect information about the game, but you have to study it carefully before you're able to be as effective as you can be. Good. So I know that's a kind of a strange way to respond to your question, but I think what your question is, every time there's innovation, we can't stop ourselves from going too fast, right? I think that's what you're trying to say. I agree. It's a problem. How to fix it? Well, identify it. And then within yourself, when you feel that tendency to go fast, just be like, wait, pump the brakes a little bit. So the big lesson, you draw a line, what's the bottom line? Bottom line is take your time in school. Selenium. So biology is not enough. Take your time. Take your time. And if you're going to fight with your parents about something, fight with them about doing more school. <laughs> that's a good fight to have with your parents. Like there's a lot of stupid fights to have, but that's, a, that's an example of a, a worthwhile fight. Take your time. Because I know sometimes there's pressure to go fast also from parents, right? Fight that fight. <laughs> and they'll thank you for it after the fact.